Good evening to everybody. We welcome you to uh, our midweek morning manna at First Baptist Church. It's a joy to have you here this morning. So glad to have all of our folks that are here. Uh, I've got them scattered from here to yonder, all right, from can to can't. So uh, we're glad you're here. I want to welcome you. We want to continue to remember those in need today, those in, uh, that uh, have needs uh, physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Uh, a lot of families that are uh, on the coast still yet. Uh, Kyle said he was going to get to go home, and uh, so he was uh, on his way back to New Orleans, and they got electricity where he lives, and so we're grateful for that. But uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to start off with number 194 uh, on the Jericho Road. Father, thank you today for the privilege you give us to be here. We love you. It's a joy to be able to come and to celebrate, Father, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to sing these wonderful old hymns, and to open up your word. We love you, we thank you, we ask you to bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, 194 on the Jericho Road. Welcome back, Miss Rita Carroll. Everybody give her a big hand. We're always glad to have her here today. Here we go. As you travel singing y'all good job all right number 321 how firm a foundation i love this old song because we need a good firm solid foundation and that's on the lord jesus christ let's sing that all right
McGee always at Williams Baptist College and Southern Baptist College. I went there twice. I graduated twice, and uh, uh, I was the only fellow that at the time had done that, uh, they said. But I think that's a story, and they were just making up money, uh, things where they wanted my money, all right? And, uh, but Dr. Bob McGee would always, on Founders Day, uh, Dr. H.E. Williams, he founded Williams Baptist College, Southern Baptist College, and founded on the principles of the Word of God and uh, God's leading, and I never will forget that. And then uh, we've sang it here many times uh, as, it's, as our church has been here since 1888. And, folks, there's nothing better than a strong foundation. You gotta, if you want to have a strong house, you've got to have a strong foundation. So let's continue to sing. And uh, what number, Miss Rita? 252. 252. Land All right. The Glory Land Way. All right. That's the good one here. you woods wet right there i'm just telling you it's wet all right what number when he blessed my soul 254 254 all right when he blessed my soul just turn the page oh, oh this is a this is gonna be a challenge now it's gonna be a challenge all right
change. All right, I think I know this in a little bit, but I told you that would be a challenge for you. did a good job on that. All right, which one? 62. Let's sing number 62. This is not in Cole's repertoire, but it's number 62. I was trying to figure out what it was, and I couldn't get the right tune of the right words, and so she fixed it. We found it, so we're going to try number 62. All right, I love to tell the story. I love to tell the story.
Y'all just did good singing today. You need to play us a good one here, but then after she plays, Mr. Pete's going to come. He's going to play for us, so you let Miss Rita play us one good one, and then Mr. Pete, when she finishes, you come on up here and play for us today, and again, we're glad to have everybody here. All right. All right, we'll give you a minute to get up there. Here's Mr. Pete Burkhart. Oh, you kind of hate to get up there. I don't do that. We've got songs with Mr. Pete. Look up there, Pete. You got your name on the board again. I'm telling you what, that's pretty good stuff. Amen. Good job, Pete. Thank you, buddy. Man, that's good stuff. I'm telling you. My grandson wanted a harmonica for Christmas. He said, told his mom, said, Dan and Poppy are buying me a harmonica for Christmas. And so we bought him a harmonica. And uh, so I bought me one. And, uh, but I've never done anything like that. So I've got, I've got a couple, of, I've got a guitar and an instrument, and I've got several little things, but uh, I've still not accomplished anything yet. So anyway, thank you, Mr. Pete. Thank you, Ms. Rita. It's so good to have you all here today. Thank you guys for coming. We're joy. Take your Bibles and turn to Psalms 119. We're down to uh, verse 129, and uh, we're at pay. And the Hebrew alphabet, we're at pay. 
And uh, as we begin, we're going to talk this morning about the wonderful Word of God. And folks, this whole 176 verses uh, have given us, or 176 verses of the Psalms 119 have given us a tremendous uh, look into the Word of God as it, as it blesses us encourages us and today we're going to talk about these uh, wonderful things of how that the psalmist today he shares with us we're going to talk about the triumph and we're going to talk about the trembling we triumph in the word of God and yet we tremble as God's word is spoken to us as we read it as we're in awe of what it has to do of how that God takes all the circumstances and how that that between difficulties and heartaches and trials and if you will just life in general it's pretty tough sometimes sometimes we tremble and other times we triumph. We're grateful for God and what his word says. So Psalms 139 verse 129, if you got it, say I got it, all right? He says, your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I opened my mouth and panted. I long for you and your commandments. Look upon me and be merciful to me, for as your custom is toward those who love your name. Direct my steps by your word and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from the oppression of man, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. Rivers of water run down from my eyes, because men do not keep your law. The psalmist gave us victory, triumph. And he also gave us trembling and tears at the Word of God. He shares with us this morning some things that I feel like how that we are to live our lives by the inerrant, infallible, inspired Word of God. God's given us a book to look after. This book is to guide our every thought, our every way. As we get married, it helps us to be a better marriage partner. As we have children, it helps us to rear our children. As we live our life, it guides us, leads us, and directs us in our daily walk with God. As a Christian, it shows us the way. It gives us the light in a dark, dark world. And so the Word of God, and by living God's living Word, it is all sufficient. I love what the Bible says when the Apostle Paul writes is his grace is sufficient for us in our times of need. God always is there when we need him. He, he always shows up at the right time. He's never early. He's never late. He's always on time. And that's to me one of the amazing things about who our God is, that his grace and that his word is sufficient. The word of God, it speaks to us about how it is sufficient. Verse 129 says, your testimonies are wonderful. We're, as we live by God's word, his word is sure, it's true, it's steadfast. Therefore, the Bible says, my soul keeps them. As we long for and as we desire to follow more after God we are to have a desire every day to grow stronger that God's Word would help us in the, the words that he gives to us folks we're ne we ought to never be without something to say why because his word here gives us what to say his word teaches us now sometimes we it's like that thing that saying is well I know it's in there we just got to remember where it's at, and we got to put it to action. We need to live this word. As we've talked about before, it just as this line is a straight and the narrow. It's not crooked, and it doesn't go. It shows the boundaries, one side of the court to the other side of the court. It shows the boundaries of the inbounds and out-of-bounds. It shows the boundaries of volleyball. It shows the boundaries of where uh, uh, the, the standard for free throws is at. This whole court is done, for, it's made by junior high size court, and God has boundaries. God God has standards God has ways and his ways the Bible said are wonderful his ways his testimony is wonderful God's Word is sufficient say amen all right it's sufficient for us verse 130 he tells us here not only is God's Word uh, sufficient but God's Word is simple now listen to this he said the entrance of your words give light now as the Word of God gives light Jesus said I am the light of the world Okay, so what the Old Testament says, Jesus brings to light. What the Old Testament guides and leads us in, the, Old, the New Testament, and Jesus himself said, 
Hey, you're looking for the light? Jesus says, I am the light of the world. You look no further, there's no other light but me. He said, the entrance of your words gives light. God's word is light. He says, it gives understanding to the simple. You know, that's what amazes me. Uh, there's been times that I have preached and there's been some very educated people that sit in the, in the pews and in the chairs that we preach to. And you know what? It's always amazing to me that that little child may come forward and hear the Word of God. Or that, 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 that little child that, that hasn't got the education that you have, hasn't been around the world like we have, hasn't done those things. And God's Word is as easy as pie to the simple. They trust, they admit that they're a sinner. They believe that Jesus is who He said He was. And they confess that. And their hearts, many times, you know they have tears that just flow. So that the entrance of the Word of God, it gives light. It gives understanding to even the most simple-minded people whether it's a child or an adult, whether who it might be, that God loves them, He cares for them, and He's got a plan for their life. Aren't you glad God is simple? Say amen. He's not complicated. Now, He's deep. I, I'd love to know more about the deep things of God. I'd love to be able to discern more so that I could explain to you better uh, and have that. That's why we have to study. Paul says, study thyself uh, to show thyself to prove unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. I don't want to be ashamed standing here telling you things that I don't have no knowledge of or I have no experience of. I want to be able to share with you the inerrant, infallible, inspired Word of God. And God's Word is light, and it also is given to the simple-minded, to the simple in heart, to the simple who are there. And God's Word, He brings us. Not only is it sufficient and it's not only simple, but listen to what He says in verse 131. He says, I opened my mouth and I panted. Now, just think about that. It's like after, if you would do something that would be very uh, 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 hard on you, on physically. It would be something that you would get down and you'd be like saying, I'm out of breath. It's, as the psalm says in Psalms 42, verse 1, listen to what the Bible says. Look up on the board. He says, as a deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. As a deer who had run hard and had been chased by a, a, a predator. And that deer comes up to the water and he's thirsty. Folks, just like you and I get thirsty sometimes, we pant for the Word of God. As we think about the Word of God, God's Word, if you will, it, it, how that light just not only reveals to us the goodness and the directness of God in His disciple and, and His direction, but He also gives us triumph in our life. He gives us victory in Jesus as a deer pants for the water. He says, for I long for your commandments. Folks, we ought to want what God's Word says to us. Isn't that right? We ought to long for this. We ought to want this. Now, as I've said before, the last few weeks, it's kind of like a hammer and a chisel. You take that chisel and you start chipping off the things that we don't like or the things that are sin or the things that God, and he chips away at it. And it's kind of like uh, the skit guys do a skit with the hammer and the chisel. And they begin to talk about that. And, and one of the guys, he stands up there and he begins to chisel on him. He said, oh, that hurts. And he said, yeah, it does. And he chipped some more, and he said, that hurts too. Well, you see, folks, when we're trying to grow in God, sometimes those things that you and I have been used to, and we think, oh, this is fine, we have settled, God says, no, that's not my standard. Remember, I've showed you the boundaries of the court here. I've showed you the boundaries of life, and we know that those boundaries, and sometimes when we step out of bounds, we get a penalty. And so as God chips away in our life, he chips away the, our, our ugly attitudes. He chips away our bad thoughts. He chips away the things in our life that should not be there. And so as that deer pants for the water brook, so should we pant after and long for the Word of God so that we too can have victory in Jesus. And he says in verse number 133, listen to what he, uh, 132, I'm sorry. He said, look upon me. And be merciful to me. So he asked God how that God is able to be merciful. 
How that God is able to see around or he is anxious to save everyone who would come to him. Paul says to young Titus, he says, God's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God doesn't want anybody to die and go to hell. He's made a way. He's provided a way. I I miss on on Sunday mornings, Miss Preeti and I, we text each other and, and, and she'll say, Brother Kim, I'm praying for the lost this morning that they might come to Christ. And folks, that's one of the greatest things we could be doing. Is praying for somebody who may sit in a seat close to us or around us or who hears the Word of God, maybe through social media, wherever it might be, but they hear the Word of God and they come to know because God is anxious to save the lost. Amen? He's anxious to do that. Not only is He anxious, but He's always ready. He's at bay. He's ready to save. He's just way. He's way. He's been looking for folks for a long, long time. He said, "Look upon me and be merciful to me." What a what a cry that is from the psalmist. As the psalmist cried, he said, "Lord, look at me and please be merciful to me." And he says, "As your custom is toward those who love your name." Now, folks, I, I believe you here. They're here today. You love His name, or you wouldn't be here. You enjoy what God has to say. You enjoy the fellowship of other believers. You enjoy uh, worshiping him. You enjoy singing the old, old songs. You enjoy those things. And that's what David here, or the writer of Psalmist here, he says, he says, Lord, of those who love your name. I love Jesus, don't you? Man, I love him. I'm thankful for what he's done for me. I, I'm th- I don't deserve what he's done for me. The world doesn't deserve what he's done for us. He who knew no sin, the Bible says, Paul writes, he said became sin for us. He, that's Christ, knew no sin. He never sinned, never thought about a bad thing, never did a bad thing, never said a bad thing, never actually was a part of a bad thing. But what he came to do was to take away our sins and he nailed them to a cross and he carried them. He bore his sins on his own body on a tree the bible says we talked about a couple of weeks ago in romans chapter uh, uh, three that christ was just and he was the justifier he was the just one who came to take away our sins and he was the justifier he went before god and said god i'm going to take kim's place god i'm going to do that i'm going to take their place I, they don't have i'm going to justify them just like they've never sinned that's what i'm going to do for them so folks when i read that passage of scripture there i says look upon me and be merciful i'm glad god looked on me and was merciful to me and then he says as your custom is toward those who love your name and i have learned to love the name of Jesus the Bible says that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father folks you're either going to bow your knee now or one day you'll bow trembling and shooken before a thrice holy God when you wished you would have bowed in this life because there's only one life will soon be passed what's done for Christ will the things that only last so remember that how important verse 133 he says direct my steps direct me Lord in your word or by your word so you want to know how to live for God right here direct your my steps Direct me, Lord, so that I can walk that straight and narrow path. Now, I don't know like you, uh, as I was reading the other morning, I was reading uh, Billy Graham's, one of Billy Graham's uh, uh, morning commentaries, and he said, he tells us that it's even, it's worse if your preacher, that's me, if your preacher comes to the pulpit on Sunday morning and he's not filled with the Holy Spirit, then it would be for me to come to the pulpit drunk. Now think about that. We would all shudder if I came in here and you'd do a smell drink, alcohol on my breath. You'd think, well, Brother Kim, he's been hitting the sauce again. He's, he's been into the, to the elderberry wine, you know. He's been, but, and you would be concerned because I, but if I step in the pulpit and I'm not filled with the Holy Spirit, folks, that's just as much a sin as being drunk and being led by wine. Isn't that right? The Holy Spirit wants to lead our lives. The Holy Spirit wants to direct us. And we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. That's what the Bible says. It means keep being filled. Not just filled up once. I, when I drive my car, I, I fill it up till it says E, and that little bell goes ding, 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 ding. And I have to go get some gas because if I don't, guess what? I'm in trouble because I'll be a foot. I'll be a walking. Yesterday I went to the hospital and uh, was at the hospital in Jonesboro, and I noticed my car had, had kind of kind of got a little groggy when I was leaving Paragool. I tried to start it, and a little bit draggy, and I thought, that ain't right. So I get to the hospital. I go in, make my visit at the hospital. I come back out, put my key in the ignition, get ready to leave, and head to the, to the next place, to the next, ho- the next hospital. I turn the key, nothing. 
oh me I thought, oh my goodness what's going to happen Did I get on the phone and start calling some some of my friends one friend said I'm nowhere near Jones but I said thanks for nothing so I tried to call AAA, April Agonisso. When we came back from California, I didn't have the right number for AAA. I couldn't get in a, I thought I was looking around for the little guy that drives the bus and thought he might be able to give me a boost. Then I, I called another fella, and he didn't answer. When I called another fella. He finally answered, said, I'll be there in 10 minutes. I said, that'd be great, Jack. Thank you. So Jack came, and, and the other guy calls me back, and he said, what can I do for you? And we started talking about goose hunting, all right? We, I didn't have no, I didn't want to go to ask him what he was going to do, but we started talking about goose hunting. But sometimes you think we need to be refilled all right guess what nothing a hundred dollars wouldn't fix i just had to go buy me a new battery okay that's what happens you got to go get some gas sometimes you got to get a new battery every once in a while you got to make sure your alternator's working you got to make sure everything's working so that you can get in and go same thing with the with the word of god we need god's word we need the holy spirit to lead god and direct us isn't that right everybody if we don't we're doing it on our own strength we're being controlled by something other than the holy spirit of god and when I'm being controlled by flesh, old flesh Kim, flesh Kim is no, he ain't nothing to deal with. He's, he's in bad shape, all right? I just want you to know. So when I read this, Lord, direct my steps, verse 133, in your word or by your word. He says, and let no iniquity have dominion over me. No sin. Because if we're not careful, we'll let one sin guide us. We'll let one thing direct us. We'll let an evil spirit or a bitter spirit lead our lives. And folks, that doesn't help anybody, okay? And that old bitterness. That bitterness, is, it, God, we go through trials. God wants to make us better men and women that's led by the lie instead of bitter men and women. Satan wants to have us to be bitter. He wants Christians to come into church on Sunday. And I, as I said Sunday morning, I asked a fellow up here on the front row, I said, how many folks shook your hand? He, oh, 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 a lot of people did. I said, well, good, because there's a lot of times where we don't shake somebody's hand. There's a lot of times we say, I wonder who they are. What, what, who's they, what's their name? Get up and go see, all right? It's important that we love people, that we accept people. Just like they don't, may not look like you, they may not smell like you, they may not do like you. That's okay. That's what makes the world go round, all right? The thing about it is that life, people are all kind of different. That's what makes us different. I'm glad I'm not like you, and I'm glad you're not like me. I'm glad we're all different, okay? And the thing about it is, the one thing that brings us together, the common denominator for the Christian is Jesus Christ. Say amen. The common denominator, that's him. He tells us, Lord, direct my steps. He's seeking God's direction. He's longing for the Lord to lead him. He's asking him, Lord, help me to overcome. Lord, help me to live an obedient life. Lord, help me to do the things that are necessary to be the kind of man or the kind of woman that would bring honor and glory to you. Because, folks, that's the bottom line. Are we going to bring glory to God or are we going to bring glory to self? Now, if you'll read what Paul says in the book Church at Cor Corinth, he tells them, he said, if my works are wood, hay, and stubble, and I throw those works into a fire, what's going to happen to wood, hay, and stubble in the fire? It's going to be burned up, isn't it? But if my works are gold, silver, and precious metals, if, my gold, if, if, that's, my, if that's my works and what they, you put them in there, they're only going to be purified. They're only going to be better. So when I lay them at Jesus' feet, they'll be the purest it could be because I've done it for the right reason. Folks, do what we do for the right reasons, not for the pat on the back or not for somebody to say what you've done. Thank God for people who just want to serve God. I'm thankful for that. Then he says, <coughs> excuse me, verse 134, redeem me. Now, I love that word, redeem how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child and forever I am, redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You know, redeem means to buy back. God wants to buy us back. What's he buying us back from? From slave, from being a slave to sin. You see, folks, without Christ, we're a slave to something. Without Jesus Christ, we're a slave. We're, we're owned by that thing whatever that might be. And, and, and I've known people that's been owned by uh, illicit relationships. I've known people that's been owned by drugs and alcohol. I've known people that's been known, owned by all kind of different things in this old world, by dirty talk, ugly mouths, righteous living, a lasciviousness, you name it. There. Folks, God wants us to be owned by him he wants to buy us back from it. that's why he sent jesus to hang on the cross for our sin he said redeem me from the oppression of man satan 
is the Bible says is the prince of the power of the air. He rules this world whether we like it or not. I, I, we're coming up on Saturday, the anniversary of 9-11. And if you'll remember, the cry after 9-11 was never forget. Never forget. Folks, it's been 20 years, and there's a lot of people that have forgotten the ugly gut feeling we had that day when we watched those towers fall in less than 12. One of them was 13 seconds, and one of them was 10 seconds from the top all the way to the bottom. And we knew those lives in there, countless lives. 30, over almost 3,000 people lost their life. And then we said, we'll never forget. Well, folks, I want you to know something. I, I, and and, and I, I, we were in revival here at church. Brother Glenn Riggs was here. He was preaching uh, when that happened. And that, that night, we, it was just one of those things. I mean, I was numb all day. I sat there at the TV and watched the whole. I couldn't believe what I saw. I never experienced anything like that in my life. I, I just never could. And I was thinking to myself, Lord, what's this going to do to change our world? Well, it changed our world. I mean, it changed our world. It changed the, world, the way we look at people from the Middle East. It changed the way we look at the world and, and the, the view of, or, do I trust you or do I not trust you? It doesn't matter if you're white or black or brown or yellow or pink. We all kind of have a little uh, back in the back of our mind, are you okay? Are you all right? You see, folks, when I think about this and I think about the thing about it, when, when the Bible says, redeem me uh, from the oppression of man, Satan is doing everything he can do to drag souls to hell. And all he wants to do is to, hip, is to stymie the church and what the church needs to do. How, has we, how have we met with, with what we have faced over these last 20 years, whether it be a natural disaster, whether it be uh, a disease, whether it be uh, a, a, a war that we fought for 20 years and we've left billions of dollars over there in Afghanistan, we've left all that stuff. It, it just amazes me. It just amazes me what we've done and how Satan has blinded, I, oh, it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. Souls are damned to hell because they did not and would not allow Jesus to be the light of the world in their life. Would not do it. Now, folks, it, it's not popular, and that's okay. It's not, it's not something that everybody's going to write home about. Well, that was incredible. But folks, I want you to know something. Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. You're going to go God's way or you're not going at all. Say amen. And I'm telling you, that's what it means to buy us back, to redeem us. And Satan has, 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 has darkened the eyes of those of us who are supposed to be leadership in the world today. Folks, understand, I don't have any, uh, light doesn't have any fellowship with darkness. It just don't. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Folks, whenever Jesus came into a place, folks, he didn't even have to say anything. And those who were demon-possessed would cry out to him and would say, oh, don't throw us in the way. Don't put us in hell before our time. They would call out to him and tell who he was. And they, the demons, the Bible says, tremble. So this old world is a mess, y'all. And that, if there's anything that ought to drive us to our knees for this next generation, if there's anything that ought to drive us to our knees for our community, if there's anything that ought to drive us to our knees for those that we love and that are with outside of Christ, is we need to ask God, God, give us a burden for lost souls who need Christ. Come on, say amen. I don't know where I got off on that, but I just did, all right? That was free. That didn't cost you anything, all right? But he says there, he says, Lord, redeem me from the oppression of man. He said that I may keep your word, your precepts. Lord, I want to keep the word of God. Then he says in 135, make your face. Now, this is incredible. Make your face to shine upon your servant. Think about that. And teach me your statutes. Lord, I, I want you to shine. I want you to shine in my life. The Bible says, let your works, let the things that you do, therefore, shine so that people will know who you belong to i'm not out here doing it for pat on the back i'm not out here doing it for everybody else to know i'm out here doing it because that's what i'm supposed to do as a child of god 
I'm supposed to love Jesus. I'm supposed to love other people. I'm supposed to serve Jesus as I serve other people. I'm supposed to do the things that I do. And I believe that's what he's teaching us here because darkness hath no, fi- no part of light. Darkness will be diminished. And folks, I want you to know, I, if there's anything that I want to happen in this corner of Arkansas, is that people know that because of what, who we serve, people know that because of who we trust, people know that we serve a risen Savior and that Christ is all, that darkness has to flee because of what Jesus has done for all of us. Say amen. Because what he's done, he's done it for us. Then he says in verse 136, he says, rivers of water run down from my eyes. I drove into town this morning, and as I drove into town, I began, started praying when I got on the road for my neighbors as I come down Harvey's Chapel Road, and I prayed for all the folks that I knew by name. I thought of Jesus when he sat on the side. He was leaving. He he was getting ready to be crucified. I saw him sitting on the side of the hill and weeping over his hometown weeping over a place called Jerusalem, weeping over the people that he loved, weeping over a, a, a people that, that he cared for, the, the, all the Jewish people. He loved them, and, and the Bible said he wept. He, it broke his heart. Folks, I, if we could just grab, I wish all of you could come with me on a Wednesday night, stand right out there, and watch the different people come through and all the different needs that they might have. I wish you could listen to their heart and they would say to you, Brother Kim, will you pray for, and they ask me to pray for them. Now, folks, I'm going to be honest with you. Almost 16,000 meals have been served here, and the reason that those meals have been served, they've been served with love, they've been served with concern, they've been served with a, with a vision to reach people. And you know what? Those folks out there, many and most of them never come to our church. And I have prayed for more people right out there than probably I prayed for right in here. That is an incredible thought to me. And I'm thinking how thirsty and how hungry. They, they don't, I mean, I mean, folks that's never been there before, they know that when I, they come up there, I say, how can I pray for you? And they have some, many of them have some, I need you to pray for my sister, she's got COVID. I need you to pray for my brother-in-law. He's got cancer. I need you to pray for my family. I need you to pray for our health. I need you to pray for this. You know, see, the Bible says, when's the last time we've wept over the generation that, that God has given to us? When's the last time our hearts have broken? When I read this word and I say, rivers of water run down from my eyes. Listen to what the psalmist says. It's brokenness. Because men do not keep your law folks that's that's not just talking about lost people that's talking about believers that's talking about us we don't keep your word god something's wrong we've got a problem so there's triumph in the word of god there's tragedy because people don't believe and, and when I read this, there's also a thing that, it, that comes together and brings me to this wonderful thought. There is victory in Jesus. We've got to keep plugging. Till our last breath, we've got to keep plugging. Keep telling. Yesterday as I gathered with uh, the Horrell family around their mama's bed, I remember Miss Clella very well as she was another one of my moms growing up. And I remember how that she joyfully played the piano uh, with our ladies uh, that sang here for so many years. And just, uh, she just enjoyed it. I had such a good time. She always had a sweet spirit. She made me a lot of orange Kool-Aid. And I drank a lot of orange Kool-Aid over at their house and ate many a meal. And I put my feet under their table. And I, and I thought, her time is almost over. Her work is almost done. Folks, there'll be a day that's going to happen to all of us. Are we going to triumph? Or is there going to be tragedy in our own personal lives? May God give us guidance, give us grace, and give us his glory so that we might tell others about who he is and how great a God that we serve. Let's pray.
Father, thank you for all that you do. As Miss Rita comes to the uh, piano to play for us this morning, just as I am, Lord, I love you, and I am so thankful for this word today. I'm so thankful that your word is, is just an amazing, amazing uh, guide for each of our lives. I love and appreciate you so very much, and I'm so thankful for all that you do. I pray, Lord, this morning as we uh, take this moment to just be still, uh, to think about our own weeping over our own uh, sins, over the sins of our community. Lord, as we look back 20 years ago, Lord, may we be the ones to say we are never going to forget. As long as you give us breath, Lord, we'll never forget. Lord, I can't forget what you've done for me as a 13-year-old boy. I can't ever get over that. Lord, I can't thank you enough for how you've blessed my life and how you've taken care of me. Lord, I pray for others today that need a special touch from you. This morning, I uh, thank you tonight as your word goes out. I pray that it would do exactly what it's supposed to do. Meet these needs tonight. Bless us in a special way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right just as I am. Let's turn it on. Try it again. See if you can find it. Give it a minute. Takes it a minute to warm up. Your little eye come on. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God. like we are don't forget that i love you thank you for being with us today thank you for joining us tonight what a joy it is to have us mr pete thank you uh, miss rita thank you for coming today thank all of you guys for joining us today it's been a privilege and a joy to open up the word of god we're grateful for his goodness don't forget tomorrow night road to the cross cowboy church is at 6 30 a worship back here sunday morning at 10 a.m sunday school is at 9 and we're excited about some things that's going to be happening in the near future. So you be mindful of those things and be praying that God's will be done. Thank you for all that you do. Let's pray. Father, today, thank you for your goodness. Bless those families who are in great need today. Father, I pray and I weep for our community. I pray and I weep over those who need Jesus. I pray for those who have no idea what the future holds. But Lord, know that you're the only one that holds our future. Bless us, take care of us, give us a good afternoon and good night. And thank you, bring us back at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. What all God's people said, amen.